Uh, I was really pleased with how yesterday turned out. I want to thank uh, all of the staff across uh, schools in Western Australia for the huge effort uh, they put in in being ready to open and welcome students uh, either face to face in the classroom or to learn uh, from home if, uh, if that was their parents' choice. Uh, so we've done the numbers, about 58.5% uh, across the state, uh, higher numbers in years 11 and 12 because we did uh, particularly encourage those senior years to attend. Uh, so those numbers were in the 70s, uh, but I'm really pleased with how yesterday went. Is it your preference to make attendance for students compulsory again when you do review the situation at the end of the third week of term? Um, look, we're going to do that review based on the health advice, so how uh, the virus transmissions are running at that point, and we'll listen uh, to schools and their representatives about what worked uh, and what might need to be tweaked. But um, I'm not predicting what the outcome of that review will be. We need to do this uh, in a calm and measured way, uh, and that's what we're doing. How frustrated have you been by private school principals and Catholic and Anglican school bodies who seem to, I guess, think they know better than all of the advice coming out of federal and state education and health authorities and are continuing to refuse in some cases to return to classroom learning despite your advice? Uh, well, uh, more and more of them uh, over the past week each day have changed their mind uh, and I welcome uh, those uh, decisions. Um, I'd encourage people from the beginning, I've encouraged people and I encourage them now um, to follow the health advice and that is that there is no increased risk uh, for students or staff by physically um, attending uh, a school. And so uh, I'm hopeful uh, that over the next few weeks um, we will see those numbers uh, increase across the state. Was it the right call by your department to stand down a school principal after she wrote to parents last week asking that only children of essential workers or those unable to stay home attend school yesterday? She then retracted that letter uh, this week and did welcome all students back but was stood down anyway. Uh, can you really blame her for being concerned, as her letter states, that there weren't going to be enough cleaning supplies and hygiene products delivered and ready to go for the students yesterday? Um, so I need to point out that one of the important measures we have in place is the Public Sector Management Act, which puts all staffing decisions, including investigations into uh, potential complaints or disciplinary matters. Um, that responsibility lies with the department, not with the relevant minister, and I think that's as it should be. Um, so I'm not in a position to comment on that at all. Surely you can let us know if you think, as a principal, it is something you would be comfortable with to have a principal stood down at this very difficult time, as we know, for all education staff right around the country on a matter relating to uh, going against, essentially, education department guidelines. What I'm absolutely confident about is that the public would not want politicians interfering um, in the management of... Um, public service uh, staff matters. Uh, and so that is a matter, quite rightly, set out under the Public Sector Management Act uh, that the department should handle, uh, and I'm confident they will handle it uh, in the appropriate way. But you are the minister. Are you essentially putting principals on notice that they will be stood down if they don't follow education department guidelines about coronavirus? I understand there's a lot of interest uh, today in this matter. I can only reiterate that um, under the law, um, the management of staffing, uh, including uh, potential complaints or disciplinary matters, is a responsibility for the department. It is not appropriate um, for the minister, in this case uh, me, uh, to interfere in that. I can't and I won't. Um, I expect uh, the department to handle the matter um, appropriately. Well, can you at least clarify for us whether the school in question had those cleaning supplies and the hygiene products that the principal was worried wouldn't be there for the students when they returned yesterday? Um, you would be aware that we made um, announcements last week uh, assuring everybody that hand sanitizer and all cleaning products uh, would in fact uh, be available. We had indeed um, a central store of those materials so any school having any difficulty in procuring it themselves was able to access that. When is it likely that boarding students will be able to return and, and what are the compromises that you're suggesting in the meantime? Would you like to see local families volunteering, for example, to take in a boarding student if, if that does help to return some of these kids to school? 
Um, look, this is really important, particularly for year 11 and 12s, um, but we are bound to follow the health advice. And so far, that health advice um, has been that those kind of shared living arrangements um, would not be um, appropriate. Um, the matter will be discussed at National Cabinet on Friday, uh, and I'm really hopeful that we'll get uh, some uh, different advice uh, about how this might be managed appropriately, particularly for the year 11 and 12 borders. Um, so I'm looking forward to the outcome of that decision uh, on Friday. We've heard that testing of students in the selected schools could start as early as next week to try and determine if there is any asymptomatic virus transmission. How do you see that working? Would that be a voluntary program? Would it also include the testing of teachers? Um, yes, so this is an independent research project uh, that's going to be led by organisations like the Telethon Kids Institute. Um, they will take a sample group um, of schools and then within uh, those schools they will um, test all teachers who agree and test those students who get parental uh, uh, permission. And then I understand uh, from that they'll go back and do regular random sampling uh, of those groups over the next few months. So uh, I, I, I'm hopeful, uh, confident that that will start um, in week two. Uh, and I think that's going to be an important piece of work, not just to provide uh, school staff and school communities with a sense um, of certainty uh, and comfort, but also I think it's going to be an important piece of research um, going forward. Your uh, Labor colleague in Victoria, the State Education Minister there, was pretty outraged by a move by the Federal Government yesterday to bring forward funding to private schools that open their doors for classroom learning by the start of June. What was your take on that? Were you supportive of that move by Dan Tian to offer that funding to the private schools earlier than planned? Um, yeah, so I think what he's done is brought forward some um, payments um, that would normally have been made in any event. I don't think there's any additional money on the table. Um, so I'm, I'm assuring that, uh, assuming that that's to encourage those uh, schools to consider the health advice, um, which is the same for all of us um, across Australia, and that is there is no greater risk um, of uh, students or teachers contracting the virus at schools if you put in place uh, the kind of measures that we've been advised to do. So I'm hopeful um, that that's the kind of incentive uh, that independent uh, and Catholic schools need. Bearing in mind, it's not new money, it's not additional money, uh, it's about bringing forward payments they would have received in any event. Just on that health advice on the low risk to children, we know it has been consistent for weeks, as you point out. Now, though, we are seeing some concerns emerging out of the UK about a new inflammatory disease believed to be caused by coronavirus impacting children there. Did those reports give you pause for thought as you sent thousands of kids back to school yesterday? Have you received a, an updated briefing, briefing from health authorities about that potential risk? Um, so I've watched the media coverage of that closely and I note that there are, um, it's very early days in terms of um, that particular set of um, circumstances and that there are mixed views on it. Um, we continue to act on the best independent uh, public health advice available to us and that remains the same. It has been the same from the beginning. I think if that advice was not to be trusted, then back in the second half of March when we saw increases daily in our positive cases, we would have seen uh, teachers or students turning up to their GPs and hospital emergency departments with the symptoms, and we did not. Um, so I'm confident the advice from public health has served us well so far. We can't be complacent, uh, but uh, I'm confident that we're following the advice appropriately.